Welcome everyone uh, to my channel Anarchy for Freedom, India's home for conspiracy research and free thinking. If you like this content, please uh, comment on it and share it with other people so it can reach others. Uh, please check out the links below to see how you can contribute to the effort we are undertaking by joining our group on Telegram and uh, some other forums that are discussed in the show notes. Today we are joined by a uh, very dear friend Malsudan Raj who is an Austrian economist and today we are going to discuss how an anarchist libertarian society would deal with the pandemic that we've just gone through, which is the COVID-19 outbreak, which wasn't really an outbreak really, but that's a di different discussion. But today we're just here to talk about how a society without a government or without a state would be able to deal with uh, a pandemic like this. The, the most common response I've heard from people is that, look, we have a strong central government right now, which is why we are able to deal with it. But we strongly disagree with that. And many of the reasons... Madhusudan will share with us today. So Madhusudan, thank you so much for joining us. Where can we begin? Thank, thank you, Johan, for inviting me one more time again to discuss this issue. So if I have to just answer those people who are saying that it is because of the very strong central government that we are unable to kind of control this uh, pandemic, I don't see any kind of control of the pandemic right now. Remember when the lockdown started, there were some uh, less than 100 cases all over India. And now after three months of the lockdown, we have more than 2 lakh cases in India now. India is on number fifth position right now in terms of number of cases. And I'm sure uh, within a one month time, India will be number one also. So if at all, if this whole exercise of lockdown is an example of the complete failure of the central planning by this very strong central government. So the big problem with this pandemic is this response coming from the center. Now what happens because of this monopoly that we are not in a position to implement our own solutions, our own plans. So we have to understand one thing that in this pandemic itself, we have different kind of response uh, examples, uh, models. So for example, take South Korea. Now South Korea took a very decentralized approach they allowed the local areas to do the testing and handle the pandemic in their own way. Instead of imposing one model from the center, they allowed the local municipalities and local suburbs, local cities to handle it in their own way. And that is the reason why the response was very systematic and it was very, very efficient. For example, one thing, if you, if you want to learn one thing from economic science and political science and other, you know, other sciences is that, that a central planning will never work because it is a common sense that who is in a better position to understand the local problem, people who are living in that locality or somebody who is far, far away from that locality, sitting and ruling from the center. So for example, if I am in Surat city, then I know what is going on in Surat in terms of COVID-19. And I have different ideas. For example, I have better doctors to inform me that whether this virus is a very dangerous virus or it is not at all a very dangerous virus, like Sweden, for example. So Sweden did not implement any kind of lockdown. They kept their society relatively open. They allowed the schools to function. Uh, they kept their economy going. They did not shut down anything. And they have similar cases like what the other places with very you know, heavy lockdown had. So we can see from the science itself that the virus is following in its own pattern. Whether you have lockdown or whether you don't have a lockdown, it is not having any kind of significant you know, impact on the virus spread. And as virus is spreading, it is becoming uh, milder and milder. So virus has its own pattern, which it is following. So if we look at all the data that is coming to us, one thing becomes very, very clear is that these kind of uh, knee-jerk approach, knee-jerk reaction that you know, we experienced in India was never needed. I mean, look at China, for example. Even China did not implement full countrywide lockdown. Uh, China, a place where the virus, the whole pandemic originated uh, in Wuhan, in uh, Hubei province, so their government, their authoritarian government, their communist party government also only implemented lockdown in those areas where the virus was spreading. 
they did not lock down the whole country like india now india's lockdown is absolutely unprecedented never heard of before 135 crore people locked down in their home for 3 months time right now and after the lockdown the cases are more now and now they have realized that they have no control whatsoever over the virus so they are just randomly allowing now throwing away the towel and giving the decision making power to the states right now so if that is the case if it is responsibility of the chief minister and local body municipal commissioner to decide whether to you know give some kind of uh, freedom of movement during this lockdown or not and decide when to start the school and when not to start the schools and colleges then why they implement the lockdown from the center to begin with if narendra modi is of the opinion that it is chief ministers who will decide that whether what to do with the lockdown now that you know 3 months have passed by he should have you know kind of consulted the chief minister from the very beginning why in the beginning he implemented the lockdown single handedly remember he did not consult any chief ministers he did not ask any local body he did not take any advice of anyone you know as far as i can see that they just two three guys decided to gather to implement the lockdown possibly because he wanted to take all the credit of defeating corona virus by implementing the lockdown you know the way he took all the credit of you know having an air strike on balakot so i remember when he implemented the lockdown people were saying this is surgical strike on corona virus but then corona virus is not like indian people who will listen to the wishes of prime minister so then he realized his mistake that things are out of his control so now he is consulting is having those virtual meetings with the chief minister so if anything the whole exercise of lockdown in india only gives us one and one message and that message is this that the central planning approach of pandemic is not going to work what is required is a decentralized approach because remember the virus is not present everywhere similarly so in india only mumbai for example is having highest number of cases or gujarat for example is having highest number second highest number of cases there are many states where there are no uh, positive cases uh, northeastern states for example meghalaya arunachal pradesh tripura assam manipur they did not have any uh, positive cases so why did they remain under the lockdown for 3 months period of time why did their economy were destroyed and their livelihood were destroyed and other states smaller states uh, madhya pradesh they did not have that many cases rajasthan i am not hearing very much apart from delhi mumbai gujarat there are not many places where virus is very prevalent so if we have a free society a society which is decentralized where power is decentralized different states are independent to take their own decisions then the approach and the pandemic uh, solution will be much better because we all face different kind of issues you know pandemic is not same everywhere the virus has different kind of patterns and remember there are many different kind of strains of covid-19 virus right now what they call sars cov one or two virus so some 13 type of strains are there so maybe very virulent kind of strain is present in mumbai then and, and in mumbai also for example different areas like church gate or for example malad if they have different kind of uh, data coming out then they can design their own decentralized customized policy if they have the freedom so freedom is very important and then don't forget this very important issue that in the absence of government will this kind of pandemic spread in the first place because for example if china was a free society then i am very sure and if all these airlines were freely operating themselves then i am very sure that you know with the first case they will you know implement strict kind of rules so that the virus will not spread everywhere remember china started experiencing cases in november itself as far as i know and taiwan was also experiencing this animal to human you know transmission of the virus they informed the who which is a central body a uh, health planning central planning you know uh, uh, institution in health sector they informed them but because china and taiwan they did not see eye to eye china and taiwan are kind of uh, enemies and who is heavily influenced by china so they did not listen to taiwan when taiwanese doctors were warning who 
that this is becoming now animal to human transmission it is uh, posing a danger and you declare it as a danger to the world so people can do something about it but they did not do it why this is because who is also a central planning authority in health sector no who everybody will start taking precaution in it almost also, seems like they wanted to justify the lockdown so they let it spread in the beginning and then once it actually became worse that is when they implemented the lockdowns all over the world it was kind of a way to justify what they were going to do from what i understand but now when we are seeing the data how can they just i mean especially in india for example with 2 lakh cases how can anybody justify the lockdown i really don't understand unless and until you really twist the logic for example the government was initially giving data now i remember uh, they said that by 15th may if they did not you know implement lockdown then the cases would have been something like a million in india now the question is do they have do the indian government have the capacity to test this many patient that they will have this number in their hand that a million cases will be there because to find out a million positive cases you they have to test at least right hundreds of millions of cases and out of that maybe 3 4 percentage will come out as positive cases so government is absolutely bluffing they are lying right because no way they have the resources to figure out that these many cases would have been there if lockdown was not there because you need to test these people and according to their own numbers the indian government is only capable of testing a couple of 100000 cases you know per month or every day for example so how would you come to know that this many number of cases are going to be there icmr doctors were saying that by 15th you know may or april there will be zero cases we are saying that every day around 8000 9000 new cases are now coming up and now when the coronavirus cases are rising they are loosening the lockdown so what kind of policy is this so i think only a very twisted logic you know will you know try to you know will be used to justify this kind of lockdown as i said the lockdown only gives us one message and one message is the central planning will never work a government lockdown will never work because you know a one size doesn't fit anyone this is common sense my shoe size is not right for you and your shoe size is not right for me so it is better that you have your own size shoe and i have my own size shoe so if in surat the corona virus cases are not rising why should i lock down the you know my economy and why should i damage the livelihood of people i mean look at america for example it's complete farce now so they had the lockdown and suddenly that one uh, black guy is killed by the police uh floyd george and now they are writing as if there is no coronavirus so what happened to the whole coronavirus and they're testifying it in a way right now saying that uh, it's, it's okay if you get out to protest for this because it kind of suits our political correctness racial divide agenda but if you come out and oppose the lockdown you are like the worst human being who wants to kill his grandma see johan uh, government will justify anything it is up to us to use our common sense and to use logic and evidence to understand whether it is justifiable or not because governments are never going to accept their mistakes no government no politician will come in front bravely and accept the defeat will say that okay i made a mistake by implementing this draconian lockdown in india and i am very sorry this many migrant worker had to face so much of trouble there was so much of misery so many people died i am sorry please forgive me no politician will do that it is up to the sane logical rational people of this country to understand what is going on and then expose these mistakes of the government because they are definitely not going to accept their defeat they will justify and the people who you know support the status system they will also never uh, they will also never accept the defeat they are always going to support uh, their chief ministers and their prime minister but we have to see the objective data that is coming out and use our logic use this science to understand whether the lockdown was successful or not and now even as i said the government health officials the committee itself is saying i read couple of days back news report that they are advising the government that if you continue the lockdown indefinitely now then the damage done by the lockdown will be much much higher than what you are trying to save by stopping the coronavirus 
personally and i think that has uh, that has already happened a long time ago but uh, since there's so much uh, like messed up reporting going on with the way the deaths are being reported and with the way the death certificates are being fudged you know there's the bias is all towards classifying people as covid and all the other deaths that might be happening because of a wide variety of factors the suicides the economic shutdowns like you know everything all of that is just side track the, the data on that is not being kept and all the focus is being given to corona so wherever we see is like you know the government like you're saying obviously they can justify it anyway and if people are sheep they live in by the talking point of the state is presenting so uh, the main sort of uh, issue we're dealing with here is i see this as a clear cut thing okay so if we don't have a state and if we have a private law society or an anarcho capitalist society then it's a clear cut thing where property owners decide like you know how they want to treat their property and who they want to allow in who they don't want to allow in the kind of gray area comes in when we are dealing with a minarchist sort of position where people think okay the state should be limited to defending life liberty and property but uh, then how do we respond so maybe if you can elaborate on both those positions because i'm sure many in the audience are not full blown anarchists but they are somewhere where they want like a constitutionalist limited government uh, system so maybe you can address both those positions okay so first let's talk about the a uh, minarchist position even with the government as i said the right approach was decentralization like look at uh, taiwan now taiwan is not uh, free society they they are not a private law anarchist society sweden for example sweden is not not a society where there is no state all these countries are with state a nation state but instead of taking control of everything decision making in one person's hand or in a few person's hand they allowed the local people to take decisions and they also took the very right decision they asked the scientist over here i don't know who is advising the present government about the science of covid-19 they've so been ignoring even, the one scientist actually if you see the reports from early on like the day they had compiled a study i think in feb Uh, after the data had come in and they were saying that they don't recommend a draconian lockdown instead they recommend like a more contact tracing type uh, you know isolating people who are carriers and that kind of approach and that was totally ignored by the government so i think it's obvious to anyone who is watching that like clearly the government is not even listening to its own epidemiologists and its own experts so obviously they are like you know beholden to the world health organization and people like bill gates and other people so but that's what i am saying that is the problem with the central planning having just one uh, body taking all the decisions a couple of people taking all the decisions it would it would have been much better if we had a decentralized approach uh, and remember all these positive cases in india are imported cases and it was this present government who started airlifting these people from abroad from wuhan from iran and from italy that is okay okay because these people are indians and they are travelers they are stuck abroad bring them back fine okay in a minarchic position but then after bringing them to india it was government's responsibility to very efficiently isolate them quarantine them and only release them i know out, out, uh, from this quarantine center after they have recovered but we saw that the quarantine facilities of government were horrible they were very unhygienic and there were no facilities available so people just simply ran away from this quarantine center and then these people who came from outside they started spreading the virus into this country so the the government's failure was very much in the beginning itself that even after bringing this uh, you know infected people to india they failed to isolate them properly to quarantine them properly so that is government's failure and that happens because there is a central planning approach now if you allowed for example some gujarati travelers are abroad then gujarat government can bring them down and maybe gujarat government is very efficient in isolating them then there will be no case in gujarat then we will very you know efficiently isolate and quarantine people we will provide them five star quarantine facilities and then nobody will try to escape so in that case we would have escaped maharashtra could have done the same thing but all the you know rules and regulation are coming from the center from delhi that is why the state governments were completely helpless and as i told you this government did not ask the chief ministers in the beginning that what to do with this situation 
they single handedly wanted to take all the credit and that is why they implemented the lockdown and the, the way the dramatic way in which they implemented the lockdown is also very shameful you come at you know 8 o'clock in the evening and you say that at 12 midnight we are going to implement you know full lockdown in the whole country is absolutely kind of you know shameful because remember what happened after that all these migrant workers they were stuck and they did not get any chance to go back to home and ultimately they are back home now spreading the viruses so in the beginning only when the virus was not present in india if this government allowed these migrant if they thought little bit one step ahead about you know consequences of their lockdown then we would have not this many kind of cases now these viruses is going to spread in rural areas also because when cities were full of virus cases now you are running this shramik train and laborers train and sending them back to their hometown not in the beginning if you just give them one week time you ran all the train special trains that okay there is not much virus in india let us send everybody back to their villages and they can be safe over there cities will have less number of people we can deal with them then the lockdown would have been a much better you know kind of uh, you know, efficient way implementing it but they did not do that they did not think about it yeah they just uh, wanted to create a drama out of that in a you know kind of a very dramatic way say 12 from the midnight it is done like not bandi like demonetization but no i understand uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so basically our whole conversation right now is going on the basis that this is a deadly virus and it is justified for the state you know like to use force in order to like you know quarantine people so even for the status uh, government position as i understand to quarantine someone they obviously need to be infected and they need to show some kind of symptoms because the burden of proof always rests on the person who's trying to initiate aggression so like you know if we sit to actually think of it as we both understand obviously the evidence the scientific evidence isn't present that this is a deadly virus that justifies this kind of a lockdown and even within the status position obviously uh, no sound kind of uh, legal statute would be able to justify implementing a lockdown like this where the death rates and the case fatality rates are so bloody low and most of the people who are contracting this virus are asymptomatic you know it's just just because of this thing that okay a positive pcr test means that you're like infected and a negative one means that you're not infected has this whole thing been able to like you know blow out of proportion and all these numbers and cases that we see are like based on really flimsy scientific ground so i mean so i don't think even within a status kind of position they would be able to justify this kind of lockdown based on the science that is available because obviously you know we do face this problem like okay when is aggression justified and as rothbard said it, it always needs to be immediate and the threat needs to be imminent you know no a case of probabilities okay like you know if this person does this then so five steps down the line something like this might happen or if a person drinks then he might do this those kind of cases we can't justify aggression against because you're b- basing it on probability the threat always needs to be imminent so if there's no imminent threat then i don't think any kind of lockdown would be able to be justified anyway in the status kind of position do you agree with that i i think we don't even have to go this deeper into the theory over here and we don't even have to go into those very uh, legitimate and right issues like what you were talking about that whether the test is actually testing the corona virus or not and the number cooking up and everything even government's own statistics shows that government failed horribly in not only implementing the lockdown but also in controlling the corona virus forget about all other issues if people don't want to you know kind of know about it or if they don't agree with that that is also okay even with the available data coming from this government itself it is telling us that the government failed horribly we don't need even non aggression principle over here because obviously with the government there is no non aggression principle but even after aggressing they did not do the right thing i mean for example just for the sake of argument if you agree that okay you aggress upon but then do right thing of saving the life even from that perspective the government failed completely and horribly so we don't need all those other arguments just on the basis of the given available government officials data statistics also we can clearly see that the government failed horribly over here so i don't think this stand any kind of like sound argument against what we are saying when it comes to this uh, maybe we can talk about the 
ideal position that we want to see, which is the anarcho-capitalist system, right. wherein uh, most people can't even comprehend without the state, okay, how will we build the roads? And you are t- like, we are sitting and telling them that without the state, we can deal with something like a deadly pandemic. So, you know, obviously this one is not a deadly pandemic, but if there were to be a hypothetical deadly pandemic in a stateless society in India, how would we deal with it? Remember, a stateless society does not mean we will not have uh, rules and regulation and everything. In fact, in a stateless society, the rules and regulations will be very strict. And not only strict in theory, they will be very strictly implemented. So for example, if in my area there is a coronavirus case, and if the other area just knows about it, if they lock down, if they close the door, no way I can get into there. And if I try to do something like that, then they will sue me and I have to give them compensation in the court, which will be run privately. But they would sue you without the virus as well, right? Because it is a private property and you would be a trespasser, even without the virus. Exactly. Even without the virus. What I'm saying is with the virus, it is also going to be the case. And without the virus, of course, it is going to be the case. But because we are talking about coronavirus, this so-called pandemic, so that is why I'm discussing that if with virus you enter those areas, then you will have to you know, face the legal system. They will not, in fact, allow you. The police, a private police manning those societies, let's say those gated societies, will never allow you inside there. So that is one thing. Again, uh, medical response will also be very, very decentralized and very, very customized. Now, we really don't know what kind of science will be available. Maybe... If you know, like what we are talking about, there are many doctors who really understand that this pandemic is not really very dangerous. And even if it is dangerous, different kind of medical system will be available into different kind of privately, you know, run areas. So somebody will find out some kind of solution very quickly compared to other one. And then that, you know, uh, solution will be shared with, with everybody. And as I said, the virus will have very little chance of spreading because private property owner will stop everything. And not only that, all these private airline companies and other transportation systems, they will be also extra careful. You know, the moment they will come to know that this kind of virus is spreading into some area. So remember, the virus started spreading in November in Wuhan. And they stopped these international traffic somewhere in March. So what were they doing for this many, you know, months? If it was the case that only through international travel, the virus is entering into different countries, then they should have locked down these different countries and stopped the international you know, travel long ago. Private airline companies will do that because they don't want to lose their customer base because if somebody will come to know that it was this airline you know, who was responsible for bringing virus into our you know, city, then that company will lose business. So they will have very strict checking of their patient, you know, their travelers, their passengers. And if they will find out that somebody is infected, then they will isolate them very quickly. These kind of things will be inbuilt into the contracts itself, right? Initially, when you are buying the ticket, this will be part of the contract that if something like this will happen, the airline companies can do that. Exactly. This is how the market would be so brutal against someone who doesn't like represent popular opinion because, you know, whoever is right, like whether the airlines sort of stopping it and losing out on some business gets more support or whether a, an airline that basically like thinks like us and think this whole thing is a scam and they just let the tra- passengers travel anyway. Like, you know, people would decide based on like what they agree with and the market would put its weight on either side. That's how we would come out with winners. And that's why it's much more efficient and better because everyone has the individual freedom to make these choices. And, you know, that's how the society will manifest. Right, exactly. Yeah, so uh, if I can add some more points to what you're saying, uh, some ideas around how places that would want to reopen, you know, want to start, like say, uh, I own a private society uh, and I control the rulemaking because the people over there have decided to form this kind of structure where I have an important role in that. And we have locked things down because we're scared of the virus now, but we want to start opening up. So there can be many solutions like, you know, uh, people who are coming in, like if people believe in, if that society believes in vaccines, they can want people to be vaccinated so that they can be let in or there can be some kind of antibody testing to see that if they've already contracted it and dealt with it, then they can be let in. So these kind of 
solutions will always be there and i mean like obviously a lot of this would depend on the science as well but it just depends like you know everyone has the freedom to choose so for example let's say i own a business and people want to come and do business with me and i am okay with the risk of like say me catching the virus and someone else is okay and they still want to voluntarily trade with us we would still be able to go ahead and absolutely do that and no one would be able to stop it as like you know we both accept the risk as like you know life comes with risk like right now we are just focused on the coronavirus risk but the risk is always there in life from like getting 100 different things so we accept the risk and we want to deal with it right now people can't do that with their own properties with their own businesses because there is a central response like you're saying and that is always bad and immoral because they stop voluntary people who don't even mind say contracting the virus and like dealing with the infection on their own and like you know actually making their own choice that way the government has stopped them forcefully from doing that and another main problem the government has caused right now is its centralized medical response because a lot of the people who are falling sick like you know they have to go through the government's way and they have to get the treatment that's prescribed by the icmr and we're seeing like you know uh, treatments like intravenous nutraceutical therapies and like other things which are showing effectiveness like you know in different places in the world but just because they're not approved by the regulatory agencies or the government that's why people can't mm-hmm. use it so there are the kind of re- real problems you're facing wherein like mm-hmm. i've heard a lot of data that the current drugs that are being used like remdesivir and like uh, other antiviral strong drugs they can be deadly for people who already have comorbidities so a lot of the people right. like who are dying right now like the ventilators and the harsh drugs that are being used are playing a big role in killing them anyway so you know if the medical response is also decentralized and people had the choice to decide like okay i want this so i want that you know they would be able to do that but it's right now like we yeah. we denied individual liberty we denied the right to make our own health choices and this is why we're yeah. seeing the blunder that we're seeing today yeah. yeah medical science itself is monopolized so as if only allopathy is the cure of everything for example there are and they call other uh, curative system as alternative uh, medical system they are not alternative they are present even before allopathy was invented you know kind of it came you know on the picture so for example there is indian ayurveda or naturopathy right uh, chinese you know medicine acupuncture chiropractors are there there are all these people i mean uh, regarding this virus you know these two things that it is virus that is responsible but nobody is asking the question that it is the terrain the immunity that is actually responsible so naturopathic doctors for example the nds they will tell us that it is because our natural immune system that is weak that is the reason why people are dying viruses are always going to be there viruses are there with us since the beginning of life itself in fact many of these viruses are made out of our cells our body cells so to so to think that these germs are killing us is itself a problem the whole medical science the allopathic doctors the mds they have completely monopolized the system since the beginning of the 20th century and they have created all these monopoly institution like cdc or fda in america their only drug can cure you which is absolutely ridiculous for example if i am taking some kind of food supplement i am taking vitamins or minerals then if that is curing me then they will not allow me to say that this is the cure they will say that this is supplement only drug can cure and only big pharmaceutical companies can manufacture drug basically so treating about- people like kids right like kids who can't and- actually read claims and make up their own mind about yeah. things like the state has and to they- come in and tell people that oh, only if we say that this can cure then can it actually cure and anyone else who says otherwise is putting the public's life at danger it is the same argument that's made with uh, like trying to regulate who like if children or like other kind of people can put money in certain instruments and like you know this is based on the same kind of mindset that people cannot make their own decisions and that's why the state needs to come in and protect people for their own good even when someone would want to do something voluntary that that whole argument is flimsy but then johan they don't even want to cure us yeah. medical the allopathic medical science this whole uh, md doctor is not about curing anything it's about managing the disease they will only manage the symptom in 100 years of their existence they are not in a position to find any kind of cure for a simple thing like uh, flu or common cold right cancer research has they have spent billions and trillions of dollars but even after billions and trillions of spending what did they find no cure they only manage the disease and ultimately they kill you 
right they just hasten your wear instead of completely curing means what you remove the cause of the disease out of your body so that requires you know different kind of approaches for example naturopathy right you eat right kind of food if you get those essential nutrients then your body is going to function body wants to heal itself yeah right? and i've been in studying nutrition mm -hmm. science as well like the only reason why people fall sick is you're giving your body what it doesn't need and you're not giving your body what it needs i mean it sounds too simplistic but basically like all the technical biochemistry and everything that goes on within your body and you falling sick is because of these two reasons so if we just eliminate the toxicity and like make sure what is not needed by the body and this can come in many different forms like you know processed vegetable oils or like inflammatory fats and uh, heavy metal toxicity pcbs like there's so many things your body doesn't need that we're being poisoned with today because of the kind of like you know bad status legal system and uh, property sort of norms that we have today and on the other hand like you know we're not giving our body what it needs because the the food and like uh, so many different things man like there's just there's so many different aspects that play a role in people's health their emotional aspects spiritual like there's, there's so much that actually yeah. controls the epigenetic environment which makes certain yeah. genes manifest which can actually like lower yeah. down the road result in disease so what the discussion we're having here is highly philosophical i mean like this is some this is a debate that has gone on for very long like whether it's actually Why? bacteria and viruses that are causative yeah. or are they just uh, exposing a weakened uh, terrain that already exists and they're kind of giving a message to your body and your body is not able to handle that so it's kind of manifesting symptoms that way so right. yeah. yeah so in a decentralized free society this kind of health monopolies will also not be there so if i want to go with a naturopathy i want to consult a naturopathy doctor then i'll go there somebody believes in ayurveda i'll go there what is important is a patient getting cured doesn't matter how he is getting cured okay if i pray to god and if it you know you know it feels good then fine okay you call it whatever you want to call it but remember all these things are placebos and placebos are nothing less than medicine so we just we just calling it placebo i mean the mind is very powerful we just given it a name like okay if people believe this it happens like how how does yeah. it happen like you know most mainstream scientists aren't even able to explain right. how how placebo actually like i mean that they actually it's it's showing us the mind body connection that like your beliefs do play a big Why? role in how Why? disease manifests and this is the biggest Why? problem when we have a state because the state always Why? has this unholy alliance with an industry yeah. like the pharmaceutical industry and then we have these things forced down on us instead of us making our decentralized choices so all of these things would be available to us in a stateless society whereas right now like you know we discuss 100 issues that we are facing just because the state has a monopoly on so many different things exactly very true yeah so i think that's a good discussion that we had and i hope the viewers uh, benefited a lot from the ideas that we exchanged today uh, if you can just tell viewers where they can find you and where they can explore your work further that'd be great i have my own institute johan mises institute india uh, mises india institute so they can visit the website misesindia.in all my articles and all my interviews are there i have my own youtube channel uh, you can uh, put a link below the video in your uh, channel for that uh, and uh, we run different kind of workshops here in this institute so if you are you ever want to understand what sound economics is or what libertarianism is and how a libertarian free society will function and not only handle pandemic but it will also build roads and it will also <laughs> it will also handle the crime it it will also deliver justice it would also remove all this uh, lesson at least the economic problems like unemployment or poverty or inflation or inequality you just name any kind of human problem and a uh, free society anarcho capitalist society is in a position a libertarian society is in a position to you know provide better efficient and more importantly moral solutions of all these issues so if they want to understand all these things then they can come and attend my workshop and they can read my articles on my institute's website misesindia.in definitely government is slavery and taxation is theft uh, if you want to do your bit and you want to help us in the work we are doing please be sure to comment on this video and share it so it can reach more people and more people open up to these ideas and uh, i'll take your leave there thank you so much for coming on good night thank you for inviting me johan good night